Welcome back to the NAS series. So in this session, I want to show you some of the recovery and other use cases that you might consider when using the Veeam NAS backup. Uh, so obviously recovery is probably the most important part because it's one thing getting a tick in the box and having the backups actually happen, but it's obviously when you when you need to actually recover something when it's the most important. So from a recovery point of view, Again, easy wizard driven approach. We've got three types of recovery. One is the restore entire file share, roll back to a specific point in time and restore individual files and folders. And what I want to do is I want to actually run through a scenario for each of these, or at least talk to what is the capabilities that we have here. So restore an entire share. So if we wanted to, for example, take, let's say that this had this this whole share had had failed then we've got the ability to recover obviously back to its original location but we've also got the ability to recover this back to a completely new location and we've got that slider we can see what it is etc we can say back to the original location now this is where another use case comes in if you're looking to migrate your um your nas workloads from vendor a to vendor b or between different places or potentially just to give a version of your backups to a different part of the company then this is a great example for that so under here providing you've added it as a managed managed server then we've got the ability to to restore that so i'm going to restore this back to a, another share completely different location completely different storage i'm actually not going to put it into the root of that folder i'm going to call it recovery and if we just quickly have a look here so this is the folder that I'm restoring to. You can see there's no recovery folder there. We jump back in here. What we're going to do is that's where we want it to go. We can see that, yeah, we've got enough space. That's what I want to happen. Then we get a few options. So skip restoring if the files are already there, which is ideal if you are putting it to a, a test and dev type environment. Well, let's only update the latest versions of them files and push them into this, this other report or this other um, share. We can replace older files, replace newer folders, etc. So this is where it's not just a case of getting things back up and running. There's other use cases here, whether it's test and dev, whether it's migration, whether it's um, restoring permissions or security as well. We see down the bottom here. So simple as that. What is that? Five clicks. And what that's going to do is if we jump back in here, and I might have to hit refresh, but hopefully what we see is a recovery folder that you've just seen pop up. Now this is only three or four files maybe. So we, we're gonna use multiple proxies to get that back. And obviously that's not a, a huge workload for that. So it should be done in a matter of seconds. We're hoping that we see, well, they're already there. So we can see those new files and folders that have appeared. And there we go, completed in one second. And that's just that's so that's entire file share. But think of the think of the scenario of moving from from A to B as a migration, or even more so, how can I give a copy of my NAS data, my unstructured data, to another part of the business to perform some sort of test against that, maybe, or some sort of data classification against that data, maybe, without infect with without affecting the the primary array. So moving on, and I'm going to skip out the middle one for now. We're going to come back to that. So restore individual files and folders. Now, this gives us the ability to look into our backups and be very uh, granular when it comes to recovery. So I, I'll pick one where there is a bit of change. So what we do here, and you'll notice how quick this is. So the cage share is, is quite big. It's where I dump everything in our lab. But ultimately we're not mounting the actual backup file. We're going to mount the metadata, so it's going to be exceptionally quick. So ultimately, you've got three options, if you like. We've got the latest restore point. So this is going to be showing what it was like at the last backup. So all of the creation and modified dates. We've then got all time. So if I click on the all time, and I've got actually got, a, I'm using this share as a backup for my, management or for my physical machine so in here you get to see how many versions of that file you've got and where they depend on what the backup job was and you'll you'll have seen that in the opening video of the series is you can see where and 
where you want those file versions to to reside and where you want them to potentially drip down into. So if I right click on this and I say restore, I should have one in my primary backup location. Then also that longer term retention. So I've got a copy of that data also in the archive. Because that VBM, this is a VBM um, file from my full backup. So this is changing on a regular basis. Whenever something changes within that metadata, it's changing this file. Uh, another prime example could be my scripts. If I come down here, you can see that I've got create random files, something that I'm using for NAS based demos. I can go in here and again, I can see that I've got a file in my short term retention that I can get to, but then I've also got my long term retention that's been pushed out into potentially object storage. And if I wanted to to send that back into a different location that I can do so. Um, one that I know hasn't changed. So if I say overwrite, we can actually also multiple, we can select multiples here as well. Um, if we were to say keep or copy to, yeah, keep. There you go. And we've got the ability to now take both of those and restore them back to the original location. I just got to remember what ones that was. So external repository. So if we jump in here under share, under scripts, again, I've forgotten what that was. What was the file? External repo. So if we jump back in here, external repo. Okay, so we've seen two files should, and there we go. Now we've got them different versions. So we've got the one that was already there, and we've got the two that we've just restored from the short term and from the, the long term. Probably took a bit of time because it's coming from object storage. The other option here is, so this first one was latest, so it's gonna pick up the latest restore point based on the metadata, and then selected allows you to actually drill down into restore points as well. But I think this one is probably my favorite in that it gives us the ability to see across all of our backups. So you're going to get to see all of your, your files as well. So that brings us on to our third restore scenario. So just to show you what that looks like. So here is this one. So roll back to a specific point or roll back to a point in time. This is going to enable you to revert all modified files and folders back to how it was from the last backup. So the best way to simulate this and the best story that we we have around this is, well, ransomware. So ransomware is quite topical when it comes to NAS at the moment in that it infects your, your NAS shares, it encrypts your files, and then you have to remediate and then either you pay for the encryption to be lifted or you um, or you pay and you don't get the encryption lifted or you leverage your backup to be able to get that data back and up and running. So over here, this is, if you have a look here, I've got my, my NAS share, I've got some unstructured data, I've got a Word document here with some pictures and some text. And if I want to simulate a ransomware attack, if I just run this, which I won't be sharing, but ultimately this is just encrypting all of those files that we have in here. You can see they've all been encrypted to this time. If I could jump in now, everything should look a little bit worse. Yeah, so not, not ideal. You can tell that that's now been encrypted. So if we jump back into Veeam, now at this point, this is where you're gonna be clambering around your security team to get things back up and running, get things remediated, because yes, we can always restore our uh, Veeam backups, but there's no point in re restoring everything if it's just going to get infected again and, and you're going to be in a constant loop. So remediate your threat and potentially take a backup at that point as well when you've realized that you have you have hit a, a, a ransomware attack or a malicious activity, because then we're going to come in here, we're going to go back, go back to a, roll back to a specific point in time. We're going to choose the, the job in which we want to restore back to. 
It's going to load all of the restore points that we have available. And up the top here, you see those restore points that we have available. And under here, you can see all of the modified dates. So we could, indeed, we could uh, compare those with the, with the latest. So I know that I want to go back because everything's been remediated since. So what this is going to do, that's going to start this recovery process. So here, you can see 253, we're starting that job. We're getting the required backup resources that we that we need to be able to restore that. And because there's not that much in here, this should take only only seconds to be able to restore all of those those files back to the last last good good state, the last known good configuration as I've been been calling it. Seventeen files you see that that you might have seen over on the right hand side of the screen there. If I now click on this, you can see yeah we've got. Uh, our file back and everything's readable again. And with that, that's the end of the demo. Thanks.